Hi there and welcome to another video on the Project Corner. Today we're going to look at the June 2020 Yeah, it is June. The June 2020 update for Project for the Web. And we're going to discuss three topics because they're all available. Even though the blog post tells us that it's upcoming features, it actually is already there. So we have uh, Microsoft 365 users that are able to update their tasks. We have charts and we have priority to look forward to. So without further ado, click that like button if you think it's worth it and let's dive in. Okay, so by now we know the drill, right? We're going to have a look at the blog article and then we're going to dive into the tool itself. So first off, three new features, as I mentioned already, they are mentioned here as one new feature, but actually we got all three of them. So scratch that upcoming features because we already got it. So let's jump in because there's not much text other than comments and we're not going to dive in those today. So heading over to our project homepage, let's just pick the simple project. We've seen that in the previous video, you get templates and with one of those templates, you have a simple project, which is ideal for demonstration purposes. So let's open simple project. In this example of the simple project, I already made a little bit of changes. I assigned a task to myself as well as to someone that's called team member. Now this team member only has a E5 office license or Microsoft 365 license. So that user will not have the option to create projects themselves, which is exactly what we want because this is just a team member, not someone that will create projects themselves. But this user is assigned to the add new tasks. So that person can now edit that task but not everything. So apart from what I showcased last time, there's actually some parts within the schedule that that person can edit. And just before I'm going to show you what team member can do, make sure to have that team member as part of your office group. So how to put that team member in your office group, if you didn't do that right away, you can go to outlook.com. And from outlook.com, you can find the groups that you're an owner of and then simply add new members or add members through here, manage group members or click on the add members button here. So team member is part of our project and he or she has an assigned task. Very well. Let's have a look at the same project through the lens of that team member user. So here I am as the team member of the project. Here we see team, team member. And we also see that Eric is also updating this schedule or he's at least present in this schedule. That looks roughly the same when I look at it through the other lens where I see TM being part of the schedule at the moment. So this is really nice. Now, as the team member, I now have limited access. So it's not a read only access nowadays. So if I hover over any of these tasks, I will see that pen popping up, telling me that this is a read only active, uh, read only cell. So most of these will be read only. But when navigating to my summary to subtask called add new tasks, I have this read only item here or read only icon here, but I don't have that here. So I can mark this task as complete. Bing. And I can undo that as well. I also have the option to edit the percentage complete. For some reason, we don't have the option to click on effort complete. So even though the team member can perform effort and add effort as completed effort, they're not entitled to directly interact with this cell. If we, however, create an additional percentage complete just by clicking 
that cell and clicking on 40. Hit enter after a little while because my browser is very slow today we'll see that 12.8 hours have been completed. And I'm doing this through the lens of a team member who doesn't have the option to create new tasks, who doesn't have the option to manipulate anything else within the schedule, just marking tasks complete and setting a different percentage of completion. Now, how does that user interact with the board view, for instance? So here we have tasks, which are not clickable. And then when I go down to this one, I can mark the task complete that team member actually is a part of. Wonderful. The task is now completed. I can even look at the timeline, but the timeline doesn't give us that much power of interaction. It does, however, have the option to set percentage complete based on um, on the bar that we have. So let's go in here. Let's see if we can change this task. Well, I can change it in the task specifications. Uh, but as you can see, all the other parts of this task are read only even the label even though it looks like we can edit it we don't have that option so with that another great addition to licensing with project for the web basically what we're saying is that it got way cheaper for team members we have two additional features that are in project for the web right now we have the charts we have the charts view charts view we have the charts for you we have the charts view and we have priority field so let's have a look at both and see what they can do for us in our project schedules so first thing to take note of is that we have an additional tab here so we used to have the grid which is the current one we used to have our lightweight agile view which is called boards and we used to have our Gantt chart view which for some reason is called a timeline but now we also have charts so let's have a look at charts and what they can do for us now for those of you who are familiar with planner boards this looks roughly the same right where we have our total status of in progress tasks not started late tasks completed tasks and we also have them in relation to our buckets now effort per person is the amount of work or the amount of effort that you assign to your users now take note that we also have an unassigned amount of work so if one of your tasks has effort assigned to it but no user that task will be assigned to the unassigned resource. I've done a blog post about that a while back when we still worked with Project Online and it also contained a unassigned resource. So I'll put a link in the show notes just for your reading amusement. So this is the charts. It's very clean, just has these few values in here for now. And I do see this increasing where um, maybe we'll have an S curve, maybe we'll have other things in here as well. Um, for now, it's the status, the bucket, and the efforts per person. And then for the last item on our list, the priority field. The priority field can be found in the grid when you log in and when you select a single task and go into the details pane from the details pane you'll see that this that this task actually has an urgent priority now the reason this doesn't show up in the grid view is beyond me maybe that is coming and i would love to see it in the quick look um, icons list because we already have those other icons here but for now the priority field values 
only reflect in the board view. So if we look at the board view, and maybe you've already seen it, um, we have this exclamation point, which tells you that this is an important task. And we have the urgent. I changing, changing this for any task is easy. Just click on the task, just open up the task menu and click on the priority button. There's four options. Medium is actually the normal uh, status for every new task. Then we have urgent, important, and low priority. A blue downwards error that we know from uh, applications such as Outlook and Planner. Let's click on close and let's see that icon appear in our in progress task. And low priority, the icon doesn't appear. So this might be a bug. Uh, you've seen it first at the project corner. And that's it for today. This was the update for the June version of Project Photo Web. If you like this, click subscribe, click like, because more is coming. Thank you very much. And if you're on a holiday right now because it's July, have fun. I'll see you on the other side.